truth, and the life. That any man who would follow me deny himself. But this world and most people in it are spiritually <coughs> blind. Therefore, most people look and seem one way, but they truly are not. Amen. They will dress up. They can wear their crosses. They can claim a religious denomination. Speak kindly and say they have Jesus. Jesus said, follow me, walk by my example, yet all people of this world know not God, so they walk in comfort by their own identity. They fool themselves and others because of outward appearance, but inwardly, God says, we are cunning as a serpent and as vicious as wolves because they know not Jesus, nor are they willing to follow him. The people of this world identify others by description, but we hold firm to scripture to know what others are made of. Description only tells us of the outward appearance, but the scriptures lead us to the truth, which is Jesus Christ. Description of the scriptures. What do you believe? Amen. Coming out of the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. In verse 9 it says, For in him, Jesus that is, all the fullness of God dwells in bodily form. And it goes on to say in verse 10, And in him you have been made complete, and he is the head over all rule and authority. Everything we need, we already have. For all things are bound up in Christ, and they who love the Lord have all they need, for all things are in him. Let us encourage one another. Let us all be healed. And let whatever troubles that have come our way be cast upon the Lord, that he may deliver us into his rest. The sufficiency of Christ. Because nothing is random in this world. For all things are appointed by God for God. Take some time to think about that. Think about how many great moments in God's plan it took for all of us to be together right now in truth. <clears throat> think of how great God has loved us all to have given us mercy and his long-suffering patience. Hebrews 10.14 says, By one offering, the Lord is perfected forever them that are his. We have God's unfailing love. Let the righteous see these things and be glad. Let the upright understand that the ways of the Lord are right and the righteous walk in them. But the disobedient, they stumble. The sufficiency of Christ. For to him and to have him is to have everything, the hope of eternal life, the seeds of favor, and the blessing of God's promises, all fulfilled in the Son of the living God, Jesus Christ. Will not the Lord bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? A mighty God who wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. In 30 AD, the governor Pontius Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? Pontius Pilate wanted to grasp, to comprehend and make a mental interpretation of who Jesus really was and why was it so important to the people that Jesus be killed. But this is why Jesus came. Jesus was born to give testimony to the truth. And those who take God seriously take the truth seriously. Did you know that the truth is fundamentally all about who God really is. That's the truth. Who is God? Who is God to you? Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? The apostle Paul wrote in the book of Titus that he, being a slave of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, he had been sent to further the faith of God's chosen and their knowledge of the truth 
that leads to godliness to teach them to know the truth, which would show them how to live godly lives. Jesus asked his followers, who do you say that I am? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. They looked at outward appearance, and all they gave him was the name of another man. But Simon Peter answered Jesus saying, you are the Messiah, the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus, seeing that Peter understood the truth, said to him, to you has been given the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who know not the truth, all this is spoken as a hidden figure of speech. Men will know all that. God say, you'll only know him when you know him. Not people, not buildings, not religions, not institutions. When you know God, you will know him. He will show you the way. Amen. It says in the book of John that when the trial of Jesus had ended with the high priest, the Jewish leaders led him to the palace of the Roman governor. But the accusers didn't go inside. So Pontius Pilate, the governor, came out to them and asked, what charges are you bringing against this man? And they answered and said to the governor, If this man were not a criminal and doing evil, we would not have handed him over to you. Amen. So Pilate said to the people, Take him yourselves then and judge him according to your own law. But the Jews said to him, uh, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. Amen. And all this took place that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled which he had spoken to indicate the kind of death he was to die. Now Pilate went back inside the palace and summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus replied, Is this your own question? Or did the others tell you about me? Pilate answered him, Am I a Jew? For wasn't it your own people and their leading holy men who brought you to me for trial? So tell me, what have you done? And Jesus answered and said, My kingdom is not of this world. For if it were, my followers would fight <coughs> to keep me from being handed over. And then Pilate said to Jesus, So you are a king then. But Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into this world is to testify to the truth. Amen. And all who love the truth hear my voice and <coughs> recognize that what I say is true. <coughs> Pilate said to Jesus, what is true? Ain't that amazing? God put it right in front of his face mm -hmm. and he still had to ask what is true. When people see you, and this is one of the greatest things that I see when I'm out there. I'm coming off the sermon now, excuse me, but this is one of the weirdest, most confusing things I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. When people see us, people of God, only thing they think is the people that they see go in those buildings every Sunday mm -hmm. and say hallelujah, but we'll curse them out on the street. <coughs> they don't know the difference. All they know is religion. <coughs> Pilate said, look, I'm not even a Jew. I don't even have the same religion as you. It's your own people. Your own people. They're bringing you here for you to die. What did you do to cause your people not to like you? Jesus said, I was born to tell the truth. I was born to show them the truth. And they can't see it. And Pilate even asked, what is the truth? And the truth is fundamentally about who God really is. Amen. After Pilate had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, even though he was confused, I find no guilt in this man. Not one ounce of guilt. You might be mad at him. I might not understand where he's coming from, but I see no sin in this man. What do you believe? Is the sufficiency of Christ enough for you? Or will you believe the lie? That all this world continues to tell itself. It says that 
God's people chose a robber and a murderer over Jesus. They had a chance to recognize the Messiah, yet they could not deal with being reminded of their sinful ways and their worthless worshiping of God. The Lord asked me, he said, how can you be free from sin without also being free from this world? Wow. How can I be from sin? How can I be free from it, Lord, if I'm still part of this world? How? He said, you can't. If you ain't free from this world, you can't be free from sin. Because this world does worldly things by worldly traditions. I'm trying to show you a different way to walk. I'm trying to give you a different life. This life will be eternal. It won't be like their life. See, they have nothing to lean on but their own strength and the people that say that they will be friends or relatives in times of need. And that's not going to be enough because I'm God and I test everyone. Remember the Israelites, Apostle Olive talked about them yesterday, who were given their freedom, but when they ended up in the desert, they began to complain about the things they wanted and all they had to leave behind. They didn't make it. None of them who grumbled and complained made it. Everything we need, we already have. Amen. And the question is not, <laughs> is Christ sufficient enough for us? But are we sufficient enough in Christ? Amen. Let us encourage one another. Let us build one another up that we might all have what we need in God. To have the Lord is everything. And when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we enter into an all-sufficient relationship with an all-sufficient God. You don't add Jesus to what you already have. You won't have the Lord adding anything to you. For remember that Jesus said a man found a treasure hidden in the field and sold everything he had to buy that treasure. And a man found a pearl of great price and sold everything he had to buy that one pearl. What do you believe? For the truth means a fact or a belief that is accepted as truth. And I believe, I believe Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, the Son of the living God, and the Lord of Lords, and the King of Kings. That is what I believe. Amen. And by the grace of God, may you all believe as I do for your own soul's sake. Mm -hmm. This is the gift of God, the sufficiency of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Bless the Lord. That is my word to you guys today from the Lord. Amen. We have everything good. Even when you ain't got nobody on your side and you're in your room alone, you're going through your own pains alone, you're going through your own troubles alone, whatever you do, remember that the Lord said, kindle my spirit, give me praise, give me honor, and remember always that I love you. And he said, my grace is sufficient. The devil is a lie. God's grace is sufficient. Everything you need, you already have. It doesn't matter whether you see one person or another person. You say, look at this person. Lord, I know by their walk, they walk less than me. And Lord, I look at this person and I know that their walk, their walk is greater than me. And God said, don't you worry about them. You worry about yourself. Because you're going to be the one that needs me. Just like they need me, you're going to be the one that needs me. How sufficient are you in me so that you'll be able to make it? Because if you ain't, if you play around, if you become lazy and worthless, to this that I have given you, it's going to come back upon you. You're going to have something on you. You ain't going to be able to get rid of. Not because God couldn't do it for you, but because you weren't sufficient enough in him. You didn't believe in him. God says, remember my son. And remember that I'm a God of all things. And nothing by me is impossible. And I love each and every one of you. And I give you all power and authority. When Jesus left, he left for that reason. I give you all power and authority. I will send you the comforter. It's on you right now. It was on you when you were asleep. It was on you when you were in the bathroom. It was on you when you were eating. It was on you when you were down and crying. The Holy Ghost is on you. Amen. All you got to do is rekindle it. Know who is almighty. And he's saying, then from that, you have everything you need to fight. Whatever's going on, he said, matter of fact, stand back. Be still and know that I'm the Lord and I'll stand in front and I'll go before you. I'll fight every battle you got. That's why we still here. How great of a lesson to learn and for it to be part of ours that we can receive. The sufficiency of Christ.
Bless the Lord. No, baby, I know. I, 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 I want to. Let us take what was given to us from now, from, from now until eternity. Because that is the way. As long as we walk with God, it's going to always be that way. We got to listen and obey in order for everything to fall right in place. Because we can do some of the stuff and knowing, oh, we shouldn't have done that, but that'll be all right. But it won't be. It will remind you of it somewhere or another to make you stonk your toe, to get your attention. Our God is a good God. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for that word today, Lord. Beautiful word. Let us just, let it enter into our hearts and our minds. I just want to thank you, Lord, for who you are and whose you are. In every situation, in spite of all things, in the name.